books are robust from power boundary between the oppressing reality of our modern time and a life of wonders, dreams, time traveling. They are a necessary food and nourish my life, my soul, my art, and my imagination. They are a constant reminder that we don't have to endure this screen obsessed world and that paper and ink can transport us in a blink of an eye just as efficiently in any time and place. I love taking care of my books, nourishing their precious leather cover, imagining all the places, bookshelves, libraries they have lived in before coming into my home. All sorts of books are welcomed under my roof. Majestic ancestors, which have been silent witnesses of the last decades of the reign of Louis XIV, and they have been carefully preserved throughout their long, long lives. But I also welcome recent books, which open the doors to old ones. Books don't require electricity, any sort of energy. They don't disrupt our sleep. They don't use us as passive consumers. Books are comforting, reliable friends. When we have ignored them for a while and come back to them, they generously offer us their knowledge and their stories. They never have their covers close to us. They can help us and support us at all moments and help us see life with different eyes. As a paper artist and paper lover, I can't imagine a life and a home without books. I need to hold them with my hands, feel their soft leather cover and hear the delicious sound of paper when I turn the page. Bookshelves and libraries are a good mirror of their owners. I'm surrounded in my home by different sorts of books. They are books I use and open every day in my studio. They are work companions, reference book, historical books, decorative art, art history, fabric books. They are books which inspire me instantly, trigger ideas, old fairy tale books, which will be the beginning and the foundation of great, sometimes long, artistic adventures. There are books to entertain, to time travel, to travel, to think, to discover, to dream. Books lead us to other books. One single book is always the gate to many other books, like a friend who introduces us to other friends. I recently read a charming and beautiful little book by Jacqueline Kellen, who is an admirable writer specialist of the myth and legends and fairy tales and this book is about everyday little joys and she writes about her books nowadays they are not only organized on a double rank on each of my bookshelves they are starting to pile up on the wood floor they are climbing the very few pieces of furniture they are invading the bedroom they are getting closer and closer to me no doubt it is a beautiful death to die suffocated by one's beloved books. The view of my books pile up or lying on shelves, patiently waiting to be picked up and read, is a view that never fails to comfort me. And this vision always sends a little bit of dopamine into my brain. I don't really understand the concept of getting rid of books once they have been read as if they had accomplished their mission and were disposable now. As we get older, the same books will be read with different eyes as life and experiences changes little by little. Most of my books came from different thrift stores, charity shop, a bit of eBay too, but a lot of them come from the old bookshop in my town. Once we open the door of this magical place, we forget all about our modern world and step into the past.
most of my favorite characters and writers were avid readers. Like Napoleon, Napoleon had a rage and a passion for books his entire life. That's what he said about his childhood. When I had painfully saved two écus and six livres, I took the road leading to the bookshop near the church with a child excitement. I was dreaming of them, of all these books, a long time before my purse would allow me to buy anything. Napoleon was known to use books as a stress reliever and always brought several trunks of books at trois. In 1815, in one of the most stressful times of his life, Hortense, his stepdaughter, wrote in a letter, I don't understand the emperor. Instead of deciding something for his departure, there he is reading a novel. My definition of happiness would be on a nice afternoon having a cat asleep next to me, a cup of tea and a good book. And some of the latest treasures I found recently. So this one I found it in the old bookshop and it's letters from Madame de Villard who was a lady who lived pretty much at the same time that Madame de Lois. And she was also an ambassador in Spain. She works a little in diplomacy or her husband at least and she wrote a, very, a collection of very elegant letters on talking a bit about her life in Spain during the last years of... I'm not sure even if she did, was not there at the same time that Madame Dolnoy. It's interesting, I, I need to check to see. She talks about all the interesting things she sees in Spain, which are so different from what happened at the time at the court in France, in Versailles. So. I think I will love it. I've started to read them already. And this one was an absolute uh, treasure I found at a charity thrift store shop, charity shop we could say, called Emmaüs, which is very um, popular in France. And it was the one we have in Sawa when I was on my way to visit my family. And this one is, it's two volumes. So if you don't know, Le Cabinet des Fées was a, uh, it's a book I've mentioned in many, many videos. It was a collection of fairy tales, 
published for the very first time in 1786 with, I, I don't remember how many volumes, 40, I think 45, 42. I own already a few of them published in 1786. Uh, but still, I'm, I'm building my collection little by little, well, as I found them. It's not an obsession or anything like that. But uh, yes, and I found this one and I was surprised because the cover is a 19th century cover, typically. This is, there's no doubt it's not an 18th century one, which would be like that, with brown leather usually, most of the time, or black, or but very often brown. Uh, everything is means 19th century, but inside it's and 18th century, it's exactly the same year, so it was such a good surprise. And this, I bought it for 10 euros, so each volume now, some of them are on eBay and it's about 50, around 50 euros the volume and you don't have a lot. And it's not the most interesting ones, by the way. This one was 10 euro two volumes, so with the recent cover, but more recent cover. And I have some fairy tales of Madame le Prince de Beaumont, who was the second retailer of the Beauty and the Beast. So she did, she did her own version of the Beauty and the Beast. And there are a few others, uh, quite a lot actually. So I started to read them at the beginning, but it's going, I'm still not finished with my past volumes because I don't read them all in a row. They are a bit, some are a bit similar, so I don't want to get all, them all messed up in my head. So I, I still have some to finish on my second volume. <laughs> And here it, it means in this picture, oh, what's a strange nose you have. What a strange nose. I, I'm, I'm curious about this one already. Yes, there are lots. So founding, I was not even trying to find a book like that in this thrift store charity shop. I know they very rarely have that, but you never know. The thing is, you never know. And finding this one for 10 euro was completely unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe it. Let me know in the comments if books are also invading your space, every room in your home, in your apartment, your studio, and what sort of relationship you have with books. Are there a necessity in your life? Do you need to have them to read every day and to have a bit of balance with our modern world, just like me? Uh, I would be interested to read about that. I'm happy at least I found this new ones in my refuge of books. I didn't buy so many books recently because I have so many I need to finish and I need to read that I control myself a bit these days. I also wanted to remind you that if you are interested in the Marie Antoinette workshop, which was also inspired by a lot of books, which I use all the time in my art actually. So the Marie Antoinette workshop was created thanks to a lot of books also. So if you are interested in this one, he's closing its doors on July 20 this year. 20, 2023 till next summer. So when it's going to be closed, it's going to be completely closed and I don't open the doors for any uh, random request or someone who would come and would ask if I could open it specifically for them. I don't do that. So it's really your last chance if you are interested to join. You have still a few days to do it. And of course, once in all, you keep forever access to the content. Just know that you have all the details and references about that under this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss all the nice videos coming. I have a lot of things in preparations in my drawers. You're going to see that soon. And for now, I hope you are enjoying your summer and I hope to see you very soon.